Now imagine this. Look at that little thing. A computer the size of a credit, uh, credit card, kind of. One that you can pop into your pocket and walk around with. A computer that costs only $35, 35 bucks. You don't have to imagine it. It exists. It is, in fact, a version of one of Raspberry's Pi, I think it's called. It was launched in 2012, and today they are launching version 2 with a faster processor and a, and a bigger memory. But still, tiny and cheap. Let's get more. Zoe Kleinman is our technology reporter and joins me in the studio. Zoe, great to have you with us. Hi. Zoe, Zoe, you've brought one with you. I have. Somebody told you I love props. Now, I don't know if we're going to be able to see this, but this thing is tiny. And I am no, as you know, I'm no tech guru. But my both my producer and I never even heard of this thing. Well, what's it all about? Well, that's interesting. It's sold about four million to date. So oh. four million people have heard of it. What it is, as you say, is a credit card size computer. Now that computer will do anything that your laptop at home, your tablet will do, even your phone will do. The only sort of slightly hard thing about it is you have to program it yourself. Ah. Now, now, that's why I haven't heard about it. I'm just trying to hold it there to the camera. There we go. So I notice it's got USB ports. It's got all the bits and pieces of the phone line. You just said it does everything, but it's not really mass market then, right. is it? Because well, the thing is, if you look at it, first of all, it, what's it missing? It's missing a keyboard. It's missing <laughs> yeah. a monitor. It's missing a mouse. On its own, that piece of kit does need some help. So this is why this new version, the Raspberry Pi 2, has come with four USB ports. So you can plug all of those things in. You can plug in a camera um, to make it work more. But, you know, it's always going to be for people who like doing stuff themselves. And this, I mean, look, this is very important, isn't it? Because the first version, apparently, even though this is much... Big, uh, bigger in terms of what it does. Um, it's all about, I guess, getting kids enthused and teaching kids. We've got a shortage, haven't we, around the world of programmers and coders? This, yeah. this kind of helps. Right, there's a huge drive to get children interested in coding. Now, coding has not really had a great reputation over the years. It's quite dry. It sort of feels like, oh, come on, I just want to mm. see these gadgets do some cool things. I don't want to make them do them themselves. But of course, somebody has to create those programs. Otherwise, you know, all of our tech's going to grind to a halt if nobody knows how to do it anymore. So this is sort of part of an initiative to interest children in coding and to keep that language alive. Kids today and engineers, our engineers, tomorrow, right? Um, the potential, then, can I ask you this? Because I'm wondering, you know, does it have... Here's a, a smartphone device. Does it have that... That's, this has the same sort of power? In theory, it does. It's got the same sort of powered processors. It's got the similar sort of memory. But, you know, of course, what it, what it doesn't have is that you take your phone out of the box, you put your SIM card in it, you're ready to go. Yep. This one, you've got to do a lot more with it. And it's whether you can be bothered. If you are a nine-year-old boy, you probably can. It's very, very popular with that sort of younger market. But I think maybe as we get older, we're a little bit more comfortable and we just want things to do what they say they're going to do straight out the box. I know what you're saying, Zoe. You're saying some 40-year-old-plus bloke here. 40 plus, yeah. Uh, can't do it. Can you can you do a bit of that? Of course I can. Technology reporter Zoe, we love having you with us. Thank you, Zoe Kleinman, joining me there in the studio. That thing is tiny.